It'll be nice to have you. You've never heard it. Tomorrow said the meeting might not happen. Oh, really? Did just check with Chad. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll make it. Well, I would expect you to show up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> With coffee. Oh, I see we have a new recorder here. Oh, rookie. <laughs> Thank you. Are you ready? I am. All right, I'll call this meeting to order. Please rise from the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So then we have roll call. And ask commissioners to adjust their microphones. Commissioner Ansorgi? Here. Commissioner Rushton? Present. Commissioner Bunnick? Here. Commissioner Wessel? Here. Commissioner Sotislittle? Here. Commissioner Rentenbach? Here. Commissioner Lautner? Present. All present. Thank you. That brings us to public comment. Is there any public comment at this time? Please, Mr. McCullough. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I just got the packet off regarding this meeting, so I'm maybe missing some information. I'm trying to understand the financing required to handle the uh, first item on the agenda. Um, and it's in the expenditures required. And I'm, I haven't seen any document that indicates to me what the outstanding surplus funds in every county account exists that could be used to pay for this, these expenses that are going to be done um, through a process over the last 15 years where the buildings were overbuilt and a lot of overspending occurred, which some people would call recklessness, but funds uh, that occurred under the uh, control and fiduciary responsibility of earlier county commissioners. Um, to an ordinary person to see these things happen over the last 30 years where we have overspent and overbuilt, uh, it has a, a strange ring that seems that maybe some of the commissioners were all here, that is the former commissioners, when they really approved some of these projects which are now going to cost us dearly, very dearly, because of some, what I believe, were very poor decisions. In this regards, overspending and overbuilding primarily. So without, an, in the absence of any document that in, shows me what kind of surplus funds we have, I would urge the commissioners to consider every surplus fund we have and use any surplus money we have to in the county coffers, irrespective of what the monies are to be used for, because counties should not, and neither should townships, be collecting taxes so that we can invest the money to earn interest rates. And if the interest rates are higher, we should then go out and borrow more money to spend taxpayers' money on, which doesn't make very much sense. So I urge you commissioners, as you consider this, to not jump to the conclusion to go and borrow money again when you may have surplus funds even under tight, tight conditions. Those funds may be drawn down to a low level, but I urge you to use prudence and exercise your fiduciary duty and not to tax us some more or not to use tax dollars to, to I would say, expend on, the, on what now we all know and many of us knew way back 10 years ago were some very poor decisions and poor construction that occurred uh, in the work done on the county courthouse and the county jail. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. 
Any other public comment? Please come forward. Good afternoon, Russ Forst from Hearst Mechanical, Jamin Nainice. We would uh, like to address the board. I have a letter uh, that I wrote that I'd just like to read and go on public record if uh, possible. So again, thank you for the opportunity for allowing Hearst to be represented accurately with regards to the upcoming HVAC uh, go, uh, bid for the government center here. After watching the uh, <coughs> special session meeting July 16th of 2019, I'd like to point out the fact that Hearst also uses trained union uh, labor exclusively and are affiliated with the same UA Local 84 plumbers and pipe fitters as our competitors, ABI. Secondly, Hearst Mechanical was betrayed as not being a local contractor. Some years ago, Hearst Mechanical was interested in the northern Michigan area. We purchased the former Arms and Coal Inc. and retained and added many employees in the area. Hearst Mechanical has maintained a branch office in Traverse City for over 10 years. Hearst Mechanical and Arms and Coal have completed projects of this size and larger over the last 100 years. Furthermore, Hearst has chosen to partner with another local sheet metal contractor, Cook, which makes up more than a third of the total project. Cook Sheet Metal also is a local and a union and is union and is from the Kalkaska area. Hearst Mechanical and Cook Sheet Metal have employees that live right here in Leelanau County. Okay. Um, Hearst Mechanical has spent numerous hours working on this bid and feels very comfortable with the numbers, the schedule, the milestones of this project as laid out in the plans and specs given by Leland and E3. Okay. I feel very comfortable with the amount of labor estimated in this project, our names and our reputation, Hearst Mechanical, is everything to us. So that's why I really wanted to be represented here today. Okay. Um, we do not understand why Leelanau County sh should spend another 200000 to get the same results. Uh, if you've got any questions, please feel to ask, but that's, that's our public comment. Yeah, well, public comment, we do not have question and answer. So. Oh, very good. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Hanson, you're any other public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to the HVAC finance recommendation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do we have to approve the agenda? Uh, this is a special meeting, so the agenda is set. I okay. can't believe Yes. We, uh, there seems to be a difference of opinion on what occurred uh, relative to Hertz. I hope that we can hear from the administrator on that. There was some some issue, some concern that 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 they there, there was some miscommunication maybe from Kirsten. I don't know. Well, yeah, that's on the agenda. That's when you go to the HVAC, the first thing is the contract. So that's thank you for the time. Commissioner Rush. Uh, John, um, for the benefit of the public and the commissioners, I would like you to review for us um, the surplus funds that we have available to us and the options that you presented to us and your recommendation. Yes, ma'am. As to the financing options we've presented um, at our last meeting, um, it was my recommendation that we um, partially finance this through a third party. Um, in consideration for uh, the county operations and the level of service that uh, it takes to, to continue that performance during this project's uh, uh, time, uh, we were going to pledge uh, $1.5 million from our surplus, if you will call it that. 
um, but it will pull in from fund balance from general fund $750,000 and additionally $750,000 from the delinquent tax revolving fund. Those funds are slated um, based on your guys' approval to get this project started. Uh, furthermore, then, I got feedback from you guys as to how you wanted to structure this and reviewing our options. We had uh, a number of options from bonding the entire project um, at 2.5% uh, um, to um, having callables at 2.86. Um, what I present to you today is a private issue bond uh, through Huntington National Bank. These bonds uh, are slated to be $2.1 million. That is the balance between the proposed um, contractual expenditures that we're going to incur and the 1.5 um, that we're pledging. Furthermore, um, using uh, their bond underwriters, Dickinson and Wright, um, a cost of $15,000. Uh, it is cheaper than uh, uh, Miller Canfield by uh, $2,500. So I s chose to include Dickinson and Wright for our bond council. There have been uh, requests for us to close later in the fiscal year, and I discussed this with our financial advisors at Huntington. Um, so we have a pending closing date of December 13th. Not only is that uh, advantageous um, for the county that we're not going to be sitting on um, a bond that we're not using, but additionally, uh, it's projected that interest rates are going to be cut by the feds and Quite frankly, banks are more hungry towards the end of the year to have more notes on their on their books. So we may even get a better rate than what's proposed here today. Um, this will have to go through the same process as I outlined in our last meeting as far as a public notice. Um, the uh, bond council advised us that uh, we cannot have them callable prior to the project is finished as if we were to uh, start repaying the bonds prior to the project being finished the IRS would question whether or not we even needed to uh, acquire the bonds and then it would become an issue because this is going to be disclosed and um, sent to the IRS in part of our uh, um, closing statements. So we have it scheduled that on 2020 that we can start making payments and prepayments with no penalty. Um, I handed out a revised schedule. On page four of your packet, it still showed 2.2 million. So I'd ask them to revise that. Uh, the second to last column, you'll see principal portion. On your packet, it says 2.2. The revised is 2.1. Uh, during this period um, of 10 years or, or uh, 10 periods, we'd have an interest of uh, expenditures of $176,000. So that would be the outstanding um, amount that we would incur for this project notwithstanding the closing fees and the legal fees that uh, we'll, we'll have to deal with uh, if we chose not to make prepayments. Um, outside of that, this is a, I, I feel the best option for the county. It gives us a variable rate, which I think in this climate is gonna be to our benefit. Uh, we're gonna see a reduction in rate um, it's a fixed calculation. Basically, it's LIBOR uh, plus, uh, say, 20 or 30 basis points from Huntington National Bank. So we know that where the uh, interest rates are going to be. Uh, furthermore, as I stated, interest rates will probably be cut by the Fed, so that's going to drop it down uh, for the fourth quarter. Um, with the ability to make this uh, 
closing in December of 2019, uh, we will be able to have those funds available to continue the project and we will be able to, in 2020, start making uh, our optional payments on December 1st, 2021. And we can just start paying that down. So if you look at your schedule 2021, uh, we will have incurred by that point under $100,000 in interest. So depending on our uh, cash position at that time, you know, uh, collectively we can sit down and figure out how much to prepay and prioritize that and pay that down. So I can confidently say that we're probably not going to see the full exposure of the $176,000 in interest. Uh, beyond that, um, it's uh, up to this board whether or not to proceed with uh, the project. Um, if they want to, if you would um, have any questions on this proposal, um, or if you want some revision, please let me know. But uh, I think this is the, my recommendation at this time to get this project moving forward. Commissioner Answer. John, we have this. Are you familiar with this motion that was prepared for us and the finding and the numbers associated with that? Um, well, don't we have it. Let me just run right through it here, real quick. Yes, sir. You know, we're, uh, not uh, an exceed not to amount three million six hundred eighty-five thousand. It says we're going to transfer seven hundred fifty thousand from the delinquent tax revolving fund. Is that a correct statement? Yes. Transfer 1.585 from the general fund. Correct. And approve a 2.1 million limited tax general obligation bond. Correct. If you add those three together, it's $4,435,000. I'm confused on the numbers. There may have been a typo on the clerk's behalf with regards to the transfer of uh, the 1.5. Uh, should be, that should be the 785. That's the I difference. It was 750 and 750. We yeah, initially it was 750, 750, but it looks to me without her being here and, and, and trying not to speak on her behalf, she made the difference up between what we're going into bond and the, the transfer amount for the total project of the 3685. I'm, you know, Correct. So this is, this, is, this, is, this is incorrect, is what you're telling me. Yes, but sir. The, the 1.585 from the general fund really is not that much. No, it should be the difference between the 2.1 and the 750 and the 3685. You understand my confusion? Yes, there? sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Michelle, send me her notes. Let me check her notes to see. <laughs> Uh, obviously, she's not here today, but let me double check her notes. It could Chris just be a simple. Did you have something? Yeah, I was just going to follow up on right? John's comment that uh, John has researched this, has talked to numerous financial institutions. We have talked to several bond councils, and also uh, the clerk and I met with John, and we're in agreement with some option. I also called Steve Peacock, our auditor, to get his perspective because I want to make sure that. He uh, felt comfortable with this, and actually he reminded me that when he came to a meeting in June, this is one of the options he recommended that we look at to finance this project. So he is fully behind this concept also. Not what I am saying, but the concept of doing this, taking some of our cash reserves from the PTR and some from the bond is something that Steve said he would feel very comfortable with and actually is recommending it. So I just thought you should have that piece of information. And I too reached out to our um, uh, auditors as to the next steps as to uh, how we're going to structure it internally and discuss that with the county. So we had that discussion. The, the actual number from the general fund should be uh, $835,068. Yeah. Okay, that, that makes better sense yeah. to me. Yes. Yeah. Her notes could, did. Could you repeat that, John? I'm sorry. 835000 and sixty-eight dollars, eight three five zero six eight and zero cents. 
Commissioner Day. John, uh, when we transfer the 750 from the DTR fund and we transfer the 835,000 from general fund, the balance in those accounts, um, how much is it? And uh, what is that money uh, set aside for in those funds? The delinquent tax revolving fund um, uh, fund balance will be used to maintain our settlement numbers. We look at the, um, a five-year average of the amount that we paid out to the local jurisdictions uh, for delinquent taxes. Uh, this would allow us with some comfort uh, to continue to do that without the risk of borrowing. With the general fund, um, depending on the time of year, the fund balance dips down to uh, $5 million, $6 million before we start our collections. And then it, you know, it, it jumps up and up to October where we get our full collection and we'll have uh, uh, quite a bit amount in there. So it's kind of a subjective question because depending on the timing of the year and the two different funds, they they act independently, but uh, to, to generally answer your questions, it will um, not inhibit our current services and will allow us to maintain those level of services um, for the future projects. The reason for my question is uh, due to the fact um, we're squirreling away these monies uh, for the anticipated se settlement that will come over time. Um, in an effort not to have to go out and borrow in the event that we have to uh, borrow for settlement. My question is, can more of those dollars be used for this project to offset some of the cost of this project and uh, take that? Either way, we got to borrow money if we don't have uh, enough money to pay off at settlement time, right? We either borrow money today or we borrow money tomorrow. That's what you're saying to us. So there may not be a need to borrow money at settlement time as time elapses through this project. So my question is, why are we not looking at taking on that slight risk of utilizing the existing funding that we have in these accounts to offset the cost of this HVAC proposal and if we foresee the need for borrowing, why could we not go out there and do the exact same thing that we're doing right now for to sure. meet those obligations next well, year? Those are very good questions. Um, in short, there have been a number of uh, discussions internally as to the number of projects that we have slated for the next uh, two years. Uh, additionally, with the drawdown of funds for the LEC roof, um, we don't have any capital projects funds left over once that's completed. Um, we do have the opportunity to draw down the delinquent tax revolving fund further. Um, it is a matter of, you know, pay me now or pay me later. Um, with the interest rates the way they are today, I think this is advantageous to pursue this. And if we do have a surplus in the delinquent tax revolving fund um, in 2021, then we use that to pay these debts down without having to go out for a bond on the, the tax settlement. But would we not be better served um, by using those dollars up front I'm looking also nationally at what's going on. You saw the mm -hmm. Feds reduce the interest uh, rate by a quarter percent. I think the request was for a half a percent. And uh, when you look at the landscape out there in the financial world, 
we're, you know, we've been on this economic trajectory for a long time, and they're looking at, you know, this robust economy not proceeding at the same pace. Therefore, the quarter percent reduction in interest rates we saw. So my question is, would we not be better served to hold off on implementing uh, this bond proposal and see how things go over the next few months or the next year? I don't think I we really talked about this. No, well, and, and the thing is, is that we haven't had to borrow um, in 10 years. How long have we been self-funded prior to me being here? Uh, 2004 was the bonding for the LEC. No, as far as the uh, tax revolving fund. Uh, none that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, the money to build both buildings next door and here was all before it was all delinquent tax money. And it took about five years to replenish those funds um, when we drew them down to make those uh, uh, to to do those projects. It's a timing issue, though. It's a timing issue, and uh, you know we're going to work on our budget this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't even had a chance to look at you know where we can look in our budget this next year and begin to make some tweaks. As everybody knows, these departments uh, have had the luxury of inflating their budgets year after year. And uh, I think there's areas that we can reduce these uh, individual budgets and look for some cost savings for our county. I our whole goal here was to try not to impose another millage on our citizens or to go out and borrow money and add to the cost of our citizens. Um, so I'm just wondering if we have really looked at all of the options that we have. Uh, we're asking to uh, fund the dollar amount. We, we insisted that uh, our reps reduce that bill that they or the estimate that they proposed to us they they came to us initially at 3.5 million and i think we got after them and said look you can do better they went back and they did better and they reduced it by a few hundred thousand but what are we doing we're turning around and we're going to borrow over the original amount that they presented us with my fellow commissioners, I understood, had a concern about having to go out to our taxpayers for the extra millage. Mm -hmm. We had talked about trying to do that in-house independently. And um, I'm just wondering if we have really looked at all of the options to save our constituents those dollars that they're going to need if this economy should roll back a little bit. And furthermore, if, if to, to speak on that, if the economy were to roll back, that would mean a higher settlement amount. That means more borrowing, it would be more cost. This is a fixed amount, okay? Is to your budget overview, uh, Jennifer could speak to that, and your, your cost driver for this county is labor. How, how, how would this change if we waited till the end of the year? This is slated to be closed in towards the end I of the know, year. I know, but they're asking us to commit to these parameters right now at this particular interest rate. No, so we don't have to commit to it today. And that's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for direction if you want to pursue this line because, quite frankly, this is, in my opinion, a good option. Well, let me, let me just throw this out there for my fellow commissioners to ponder. Uh, this week we have been asked to consider a millage that we will be discussing on August 6th for basically the same amount of millage that would be required to pay for this particular project. And if we are going to go out for an extra millage, I think what it would be uh, prudent on our part to consider 
this as the millage as opposed to the proposed millage request that will be coming up. If we're going to tax our people, then let's tax them for those things that we're mandated to fulfill as opposed to going out and incurring more debt and then turning around and asking our citizens for a millage for something that is not mandated. Yes. So maybe we should rediscover or re rediscuss that Commissioner. option as well. Commissioner Red. Um, going back to what uh, Commissioner Ansorgi brought up, I, the way I read this is that 750000 would be transferred from uh, DTR, the 516, to the 101, and then the transfer of the greater amount, which I'm not exactly sure what that number is, uh, from the 101 to the Capital Building Fund project does equal the amount that we're talking about in terms of it's just a double transfer. Oh, I see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So, so that's one thing. The other thing is, is the figures. I'm a little confused because on here it says um, one million five eighty five, and then you you quoted uh, eight thirty five. So there's a fifty thousand dollar difference in those numbers. Michelle which, wasn't focused on that. She's not quite sure when uh, the bond and the loan comes. Who's actually? Um, going to wrap that around. I, we don't believe that that comes from the 470. So either the general fund picks that up or delinquent, someone else pays for your bonding, <coughs> excuse me, your 50,000. So that's why that is not that number is not in here. The number that she called me about is the number that is proposed to you by your contractor. So that 3,685,068 is supposed to be to the dollar of what's represented and was proposed to you. So we came up with the, the figures, the bullet points that follow. And you are correct, uh, Commissioner Rettenbach. Within the general fund and the DTR, the DTR is not in past practice to um, allocate funds to other funds. Uh -huh. The only fund it can transfer to is the general fund. So originally the motion that was talked about was the DTR to the, the capital improvements, and we do not do that. It's just like when we make MERS payments or anything like that, everything flows to the general fund. The general fund is then um, allocated out and transferred to. Okay. In regards to the um, optional payments can be made uh, beginning January of 2021. If you would take into consideration Commissioner Rushton's suggestion of putting off the bonding process, I think we did talk about this in the past, and if we didn't have to ask for as much money for a bond, I mean, if we needed what I would call a float, <laughs> right. um, then then we would go in a higher interest rate. Am I incorrect? I, I believe that we've talked about different We amounts. haven't received a schedule of draws from um, the contractors, so to understand what the cash flow requirements would be to finance this project are unknown at this point. Um, I was asked that uh, I present an option that we closed later this year uh, specifically um, by you, and we came to the determination that the most advantageous for us to borrow at the end of the year because it would be a lower interest rate, right. and the bank themselves would be more willing to negotiate uh, a better rate because the year end closing. Uh, if we were to wait <coughs> beyond that, uh, there's yes, many unforeseen. Okay, so so the the two seven eight or whatever it is that that the rate is at now. Yes. Is that possible that it will go down? I mean, with the Fed lowering yesterday and yes. we this was, it to maybe go down again. Yeah, this was published July 24th, you know, and so, yes, I, I would suspect because it is a moving rate, it would be uh, going down. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lauder, you had your hand up? Yes, I did. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was thinking, <clears throat> My thoughts were much, much along the same line as, as what Deborah was saying, as I, because I think she brings up a very valid point that's not to this issue, but it's to the obligations that we're asking of our taxpayers or, or potentially asking of our taxpayers. And we've got, we've got a lot of big ticket numbers out there. We were asked to approve a special meeting for next week without any mention of a millage and now there's, we find out 
as we much suspected, that the drive is really another millage that we're going to be asked to, to um, approve. So we've got, on top of our MERS obligation, we have the jail roof, we have this project, we have our radio system yet that we're still mm -hmm. obligated to pay for. Um, so, and then now there's going to be another ask of yet another millage. And um, so these numbers are beginning to really, not that they didn't alarm me before because they did, but these numbers are in these projects are really, really beginning to alarm me. And exactly how much are we, do we want to continue to keep obligating our, our taxpayers for for things? As you know, like with the radio system, I pushed for the individual departments to actually pay more towards the system than, than what we did. And we ended up paying almost almost entirely the whole system. So um, that's my comment. I, I was also thinking along the line of, as, as Commissioner Rushley was saying, that um, wait perhaps until we're further into the budget process to determine how we're going to pay for this, um, which, which option to go with, I, I should say. Mm -hmm. So. Well, let me suggest an option that may suit everyone's comments here. In terms of getting this project done, we're in a timeline with the order of the equipment and the contracts. That. that is a deadline crunch date. In terms of financing, we're not at deadline now because we have the money to get the project started. John did what he was asked to do. He w you asked him to come up with financing options. John did a lot of work. Michelle and I talked. We talked with you council. So this is an option John basically came up based on your comments. But as I understand, the critical part is we have to buy the equipment now. Correct. So that we have enough cash for. The mobilization. Yeah. We, we have enough to get this project started. Today is August 1st. Your budget will be approved the first week of October, which is, like, I believe, actually the first Tuesday is August, October 1st or 2nd. So we're two months away. We're just going to start the budget process. Right. Even if you wish to go to financing, I think you still could start in October and still have the money by December. Yes. Yeah. So in that respect, what you're saying, Commissioner Rushton, mm -hmm. makes sense. You can approve the contracts. You can start the project. We have enough resources to pay through it. If we get to October 1st, You'll know exactly what you're talking about for the 2019 budget. Exactly. At that point, you may want to reduce this from X dollars to a lower amount. The interest rates may be better. The timeline, as I understand, based on discussion, we still could meet that December 31st date. It would be started, close. It would, but we could do it if we started There's October. a 45-day public notice uh, that we have yeah. to post, plus uh, you know, we're just getting the legal documents back and forth and getting them signed. So if it looks like at the uh, middle of or late September, we need, you still want to discuss it, we could start the process, but we could approve the 2020 budget as well as a potential financing thing, the first meeting in October, which is the first week of October. Uh, yeah, I would say no later than October. Because yeah, so you could in theory notice. do that. But there's no urgency from our perspective right now to get no. the financing plan finalized right now. Uh, I think that's a great compromise. We would be able to get that this project started. We would have an opportunity as a board to review uh, the ongoing capital projects that we're faced with and get our budget in order, look at our extra funding, and make a decisive decision on this issue you know, if we get done with budget early enough, maybe we may revisit this, uh, you know, at some point before we actually complete the budget because we'll have a strategy and a plan to move forward um, on this project. Yeah. And others, it sounds okay. like we've got a lot more coming. So if you look at the motion I gave mine to Jen, you actually could proceed with the first part of the motion. You're going to do the first part. You're going to stop where not to exceed more than the number. And not worry about the the body. funding. The correct. You leave the if you wish out. to do that. Well, I mean, I, I had a, a question. One is yesterday at the the airport commission, um, they talked about equipment investment loan. And I don't. They said that way you don't have to pay for bonding. We don't qualify. We don't qualify for those. No. Okay. So that's 
I guess that puts it out because they, they said they could get that, that kind of money. There's certain authorities and certain. Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. I think. Okay, so so that that a answers that. Then, but I, I was just wondering, um, how much do we have in our DTR fund at this time? Isn't it around five million? Or is it more? Yeah. Than no, that? It, it would say five six million. And that's but the, and that's the amount that the, the most in the last. 10 years you've paid out, isn't it? It's around five million. It's usually less than that, it's but I think less that's than the most. Yeah. And yep. that's why you want to stay at that because at one time at least you hit that. Well, he has investments too, so cash-wise he's less than three. Correct. So that's what his his hiccup okay. is: is that it's not that's not liquid. In your general fund, the majority of this is liquid. Okay, because that was my next question: What do you have besides that's in the DTR fund? But you're counting no, the that's investments. Everything. That's yes. investments in right. every Correct. Right. So if okay. his if his fund balance is 6.1 right now, the majority of that is that money is owed to him. It's a receivable on the books. So that's what's showing is going to come in to him. I see. If everybody was to pay their taxes by the end of this year, he'd have 6.1 million dollars in cash and in, in investments. Right. Cash Between and investments. Right. But, okay. but that Between. doesn't happen. No. And then what about how much is in the general fund? Now the general fund liquid is about two, two point five right now, and then he has the other invested. So that's why we were comfortable with seven fifty this year, and if need be seven fifty next year from your general fund. <clears throat> your general fund will not see a deficit, but you will bring your fund balance down from seven million into the six or high and low fives, if you were to take from the general fund. But your cash is there in the general fund. And that's not taken into consideration. For the 750,000 you're talking about. Even 1.5. 1.5. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then are there any other d additional funds available for this kind of a project? Reserves. What do we have in the reserves? You have a budget stabilization that you have by a board policy that you're to keep 3% in. Right now we're about 900,000 short of that. So that's if everybody doesn't pay their taxes and you have to work off what you have. That's, that's, really that's not separate. For this. No. no. Um, the only thing you can do is you could look at your budgets <clears throat> this year, which uh, Michelle and I have talked to you about before, is uh, your transfer ins to other funds. Um, <clears throat> and then we try and keep those nice and steady. Does that mean that next year you let the child fund go because it's a $360,000 transfer that's budgeted? And you let it ride until they need it. That's 360 that's left in your general fund, but there's no guarantee. Right. So we try and keep that. I try and keep those as stable as I can when I when I bring those to you. Um, Health insurance is going up. Uh, can I get a point of clarification, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, Jen, you said that you had in the general fund liquid 2.5. Mm -hmm. What what is the total of the fund liquid and invested? <coughs> Um, I would say you probably have three five total right now. Right now, you're, he's taking in their money in July. So I, that's I'm just working off what I was doing for budget through end of June. Um, <clears throat> so I would say he's we're now into our collection season. Um, typically, we all know in our budgets we budget low on revenue. So our budget number this year will probably come in about 300, 350 higher. Mm -hmm. So depending on how the collection goes, you would end up again with more revenue than expenses in the scheme of things without the project your budget is going to look I would say I'm not probably a great term a skew because you're going to bring in 750 from the DTR and I'm going to push 150 1.5 out mm -hmm. so it is going to look like you're using your fund balance to supplement this fund which we are mm -hmm. but in the end you'll have a, a net loss meaning you took from your fund balance to fund this so yeah, I don't think you gave me a concrete number. Um, I can't, I, right now I couldn't give you that. I mean, I can certainly um, at the next budget meeting give you what will be. I know that when I ran the numbers um, to prepare your budgets for you, there's about 3.3 .3 to 3.5 in your fund balance in the general fund. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You will be getting your budget books here shortly, so you can take that home and look at that. Yeah. I appreciate all your input. But it sounds like then there's there's really not an additional fund that we can get for this kind of project that we can take the money from. No, I mean initially when we all sat down and we looked at this project and we were thinking it was roughly three million. That is where we came in with over a two-year period. Yes, you could take 
1.2 um, or 1.3 and 1.3 um, from each fund over the next two to three years and you would be in what Michelle would call just the safe zone. You don't have too little, you don't have too much. Right. But when it comes in at 3.6 and if you want to drain 1.5 from the general fund, you need to now supplement the other. So well, and then we still got the 300,000 additional for the roof too. That's that correct. Yeah. Correct. And that's going to so, probably come from general fund this year unless um, right now right. in the 20 um, right now in your 2019 budget, uh, John doesn't have anything from delinquent coming over to us. He actually has a contingency line item in there. So we haven't talked about, okay, is that contingency going to be part of the 750 he's sending? Is that contingency going to be the roof this year plus an additional 750? I mean, it's really, you know, you're really talking um, a shuffling game here to to cover these expenses. Yes, that have gone up and over what we initially sat down and looked at. When we initially sat down and looked at your roof, what was proposed, and this, you were cash, you were cash heavy, you were fine, but you've come in almost a million dollars extra mm -hmm. from what we, so what we looked at. So if you could go to a third year, yeah, we could right. probably come up with that. But you, we can't guarantee that that third year is going to be that you have that 750,000 or you have that 900 to come into. So that's why when you're looking at these alternate payment systems, you're looking at a bond or you're looking at a loan of some sort to guarantee that your funding and your projects go ahead without a hiccup. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Absolutely. Okay. Better than I can say it. Commissioner Long. <laughs> it, uh, it does. So, so on that point, Jennifer, are we okay waiting till the budget process to, to get something firm and concrete or is this the best way to go today with what's recommended? If you were asking me um, on my professional standpoint, I would say that for John to, be, to feel safe that you would go with your commercial lending. And I state that because the unknown is there and your project is far outside your reach of cash. Um, you know, if you had told me that this was going to be a less, uh, he and I would come on the same terms and we'd say we've got you covered, but we don't have you covered. And so do you really want that unsecure? Can I tell you, are you going to find 500000 in this budget I'm preparing for you? Absolutely not. I can tell you this is the first year in many years that your fund balance is less than a million that you're going to pull to, to balance your budget, but I don't have a guarantee that that's going to stay that rate that that's going to be that way. There's no wages negotiated, you know, things that we'll talk about with your budget. Right. So this is what I would call a flat budget year. You know, there's there's hardly any increases in there. It's very it's a very just rolled from one budget to the next. Um, so I would call this a flat year. And we've been warning about that for some time. That Correct. That's going to happen. Correct. So yes, comfort. I would I mean, I don't carry the cash he does. But my guess would be is that he's most comfortable if you if you follow through with your commercial lending versus waiting to see if he's going to have to bond out on his DTR. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Commissioner? Wright? Well, it still seems like we don't have to make a, a decision about the transfer of these funds uh, until October. Am I correct in that understanding? No, the transfers would still. Right. I will prepare. I would prepare a budget yes, amendment. I will be doing so. If you if you go ahead and you make this motion that you are going to go ahead with this HVAC project, that you are going to um, not exceed 3.685, um, the first portion of that will come to you in a budget amendment and a fund transfer, to have John's funds come over to the general fund and the general fund to the 470 to start your purchase project process. Now the signing of the bonds. Again, it's going to take 60 days to finalize those. So, um, well, we could even do that to August meeting or September meeting. Yeah, This is that's, that's, so that's, that's the point. Today. Right, that's right. the point I'm trying to make. No, yep. no. Yeah. If you give me the the motion that says you have approved this project, then I give you in August at your uh, regular session your amendment and your transfers to to process this so that there's payment there. Okay. Commissioner Rush, do you have a question? Uh, no. Okay. I don't. Any other questions here? Just one point of clar for clarification, and all of you know this, but I'm sure the public understands. When we're talking about bonding, we're not talking about a vote of the people for the bonding. A lot of people, when they hear bond, they think of school bonds and so forth, the public vote on it. This is not this type of a bond. This is a decision made by the board. Does not require public vote. I think all of you knew that, but I just want to make sure everybody understood that. 
Uh, additionally, going with the private placement bond, we're saving $20,000 in um, brokerage fees. So again, it's just a cost saving measure and uh, the most flexible vehicle that I could find to suit the financing needs. Whatever the dollar amount may end up being, and this type of product I think best suits what we're looking for. So John, in theory, Huntington could come back in a couple of weeks with a lower interest rate. Too, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. At that time, we could decide at the August, September, or special meeting. Yep. Or the October meeting. Mm -hmm. Looking for a motion. I'm trying. I, I was Go prepared ahead. to make one, uh, but I'm. I, I, are we just making one on the first two bullets and leaving the third bullet off? That's correct. Um, I, I, I gave it to Jen, so I want to cut. Um. <laughs> I think the recommendation from the clerk would be that um, what you want to do is you want to do your motion um, to approve the project and you want it not to exceed 3.6 and you'll state you'll stop at that point because then the funding um, will be basically the amendments and transfers and then future uh, motions in regarding how to supplement the 2.1. Does that make sense? We don't need to include any of the bullet points. No, I don't believe so. You are allowing the county to enter into this project for 3.6. Um, we've already stated on the record what the recommendations for the money is, and that will be a 2019 amendment and then transfer. So those amendments and transfers will be made on the record at your regular session in August. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Laurel. I, uh, I can, that's not going to fly. I move, I move to approve the uh, project for the Leona County Government Center in the amount not to exceed three million six hundred eighty-five thousand sixty-eight dollars. Second. <laughs> Commissioner Hansen. We're approving the dollar amount, but we have not had the discussion about the contract yet. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, is it a not to exceed amount? It does say that not yeah. to yes. exceed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So if for some reason in our next discussion, the amount is not the full amount, we can adjust that at that point. Yeah, it clearly says not to exceed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I would like to amend the motion to state uh, with funding as with initial funding as follows with the transfer of 750 from the delinquent tax revolving fund DTR number 516 to the general fund 101. Second transfer would be 1.585 and $68, then from the general fund 101 to the capital projects fund for 70. And the remainder of the project to be determined at a future date. I'm comfortable with that, but I think that's what. I'll support the remainder. Okay. All right, now does anyone want to speak to it? I wanted to wait till we got a second on it before we speak to it. Let's go ahead. I'm, I'm comfortable amending my motion to with that language. I thought that Jen said the clerk and the treasurer would be comfortable not including that in this motion. It's does this present it's a problem redundant. to you? It, yeah, it's simply redundant because we're going to bring before you a budget transfer. So basically doing I'm sorry, I can't hear you. It's a redundant statement of request in the motion to have the fund transfers in there because the budget amendment and transfers will be brought to you at your next meeting. Okay. So I will uh, restate my amendment then. Or you could just remove it. No, I'm going to okay. restate it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, with funding as follows, with funding to be determined at a future date. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's the second amendment? No, it's the first one. You're no. redoing the first one. It's redoing okay. the first one. Okay. May I? 
we, we, we don't have a second on that, so I guess it failed. May I speak to the amendment that is on the floor? Excuse me? May I speak to the amendment well, that yes. is on the floor? Just to clear, just point of order, because there was an amendment made, it was seconded, and she's revising it. The person who seconded, does she agree with the? There was no second on the second amendment. Right. No, so the first the, amendment no, stands, had, and we haven't voted on the You didn't make a second amendment. amendment. You just revised no the first second. one, right? No second. The second had no second. So the revision so, is not passed. What? So it's back to the original amendment. Which I would like to speak to. I thought she was revising her first amendment. She was trying to. Okay. Yes. It didn't happen. Okay. She was trying. And if I, if, if, if right. I may, if, if I may, we've got the amendment on the floor. Yes. And, I, and I understand what Commissioner Rushton is doing. So basically what we are saying is we're directing the clerk to do exactly what she's going to do anyway. This is your redundancy. But at the same time, we're adding that portion to our motion. So we are now letting our taxpayers know where some of it is coming from. So that's why I supported the motion. It does spell out, and even to ourselves, the first portion of the, of the funding. And then those amendments and transfers will come to us. Sure. So that's why it's portion. Yes, so. Clerk's fine with it, I'm fine. Whatever you wish. <laughs> I guess my point is, is we haven't decided how that future funding is going to happen yet. So I wanted that uh, in the motion so that we all have the same understanding that we are yet to decide how that future funding is going to come about because we still have all options on the table. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like we're dealing with 911. Sort of. Yes, my concern. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Fancy so, footwork. Right. Yeah. All right, so we do have a, a motion and amendment. Well, actually, amendment, so we'll vote on the amendment. Could, could we have it restated, please? Sure. <laughs> I mean, would you like I, me to restate it? Well, it's yeah, just the you first, can or I can. first three. Go ahead. First motion, two bullet points. Yeah. I, I would say the motion is is going to be um, that Leelanau County Board of Commissioners uh, approve the HBA project for Leelanau County um, Government Center in the amount not to exceed three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. And then the the amendment, and that's the per first part. Then the amendment to it is the, the transfer of funds. Of 750,000 from the de delinquent tax revolving fund DTR from 516 to the 101, and then the tran transfer of uh, 1,585,068 dollars from the general fund 101 to the capital project fund 470. And then wasn't it and 2.1 to be yet determined? Oh. No, that's a oh, okay. Vote. No, that being yeah. So you're going to leave it half out there? Yes, that was the original present. motion, but you didn't include my amendment, but we didn't get a second, so it's not there. Is right. That correct? Okay. So anyway, that's what we're, we're voting on, as far as I know. Is, was there any other questions about it? We're voting on the amendment. Yes. And so all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. 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 Roll call, please. Yeah, I guess we have to have a roll call. Right. I'm not really sure. I think it failed. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner Rushton? Yes. Commissioner Sotosloto? No. Commissioner Wessel? Yes. Commissioner Ansorgi? No. Commissioner Bunnick? No. Commissioner Rentenbach? No. 4-3 fails. Okay. So that'll bring us back to the original motion. Three, four. Three, four. Thank you. Yeah. So, and that, and that would be um, from Commissioner West, Wessel, in which he says the Leelong County Board of Commissioners approved the HBA project for Leelong County Government Center in an amount not to exceed three million six hundred eighty-five thousand sixty-eight dollars. So, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Aye. So the motion passes five to two. And who are the two no votes? Rushton and Bunny. Okay. Rushton and Bunny? Yes. So any other questions for? I think that's for now. All right, sir. I think there will be later. Thank you very much. Thanks for your help, guys. Yeah. I'll let the there. Yeah.
All right, then that brings us, the next thing would be um, the HVAC recommendations. Yeah. What you have is a series of recommendations, three contracts and then purchase orders. These contracts were drafted by our legal counsel. There's some dialogue with the contractors, but this is our legal counsel and they agreed. There were some minor modifications from the first one. I sent you the second one in the final version, but this is from our legal counsel. The first one is from ABI. And at this point, I probably would want to address Commissioner Whistle's question. So the bids were due Friday, July 12th uh, at uh, 3 o'clock. ABI bid was on time. The bid from Hearst was a few minutes late due to some allegedly traffic issues or some miscommunication or something. But we did not open any of the bids until they came in, so approximately 3.15. So the bids were not open until Hearst submitted their Bids. So they were all were sealed bids because that was a question that was brought up. At that point, uh, our consultant, Kirsten, I believe, Mr. Richards, well, I asked him to review all the contracts and all the bids because we had several bids for all the projects. And uh, they did that. We had a special meeting. At that point, they made their recommendations on the contracts. And ABI was the one they recommended. It was a special meeting. You heard from Kirsten, her rationale. I believe John was also here with that. After that meeting, I received a call from the representative from Hertz with concerns, I believe, was it from you? Uh, I was from town, no Okay, I didn't think it was you, okay. Uh, he called me, they watched the video of the meetings and were concerned about the statements and uh, claiming that they were not truly vetted out as uh, Ms. Polly Castro stated. So I, I've asked the gentleman to put it in writing and I said I would pass it on to the Board of Commissioners and uh, if they wish, they could come today for a meeting. I also passed on the exact same information to Kirsten and John and the team for them to response. Uh, Hearst says they were not vetted. Kirsten says they were vetted. So they did that process. We were not involved with that process. There's a difference of opinion. As recently as yesterday, I talked to Kirsten about that. She says there was a full vetting process. The jump from Hearst says that was not the case. They're claiming, as you heard, that they uh, can meet all the criteria and the standards and the budget and the schedules and they took uh, ref they took objections to some of the comments made about the quality of their labor pool and so forth. So in a nutshell, that was my involvement between the two individuals. I did ask Mr. Richards to come here because I thought this might come up and if you wished he can address why they went forward to ABI or you can ask questions to both gentlemen here. Because there's a substantial price difference. Yeah, I, I would like to because there, in fact, there seems to be some confusion about facts. And they either were vetted or they weren't vetted. And so I, I'd like Mr. Richards to speak to that. Uh, John Richards, uh, representative of E3. Um, Within this, after this bid process, we um, we contacted both the the uh, mechanical bids that we received, and we did talk to them, uh, trying to get a clearer picture of of how their bids were built, uh, where where they had labor, where they had uh, materials, and so I I. Kirsten was the was the primary person in doing that work. I was uh, supporting her, but I believe that she looked, you know, tried to put all of the information in her spreadsheet to determine um, the, the idea of where the monies were in the processes. Uh, we didn't have a formal interview where we sat at a table and talked about. Uh, the materials that they had in their bids, uh, I think we understood them both to be qualified in, in putting together bids that had all of the material and labor. So we didn't, uh, the materials also typically in a, in a post bid interview, you'll talk about what, what kind of materials do you have in for your pumps or, or such. And I think we, we're confident that both contractors had uh, equal or or as spec equipment, so we didn't feel the need to talk to them about that. 
Um, but, uh, you know, the both of the bids were really within our, uh, the, what we had projected as a budget. So uh, I, I guess I wouldn't, I, we didn't focus on the, an additional cost because it was within our, what we had, had projected as a budget. So uh, I, we didn't look at that uh, $200,000 as something that would be an additional cost. It was within our kind of projected costs. So uh, I don't know if there's anything else. Commissioner well, Hansberry. As I asked in the, in the previous meeting when Kristen addressed this, you know, I brought up, you know, this, the Hearst bid's $205,000 cheaper. Mm -hmm. And I asked the question, is there a problem with the firm? And my understanding is both firms are reputable firms, that, there, you know, that there's no question out there as far as ability to perform the work. You know, that's, that's what I got out of it was that there wasn't any red flags out there. You know, I did a Google search. I didn't see anything with either company that, you know, they have legal problems or constant, in, constantly in court or anything like that. I didn't see anything like that. And that's my understanding is that both firms are reputable firms doing very large projects. And I asked the question, why would we pay an additional $205,000? And I did not get a good answer. So I'll ask you the question. Why would we pay an additional $205,000 to go with vendor A versus vendor B? I, you know, I can't give you a smoking gun that will tell you exactly this is the only or the very specific reason. But I, I guess we believe that we're within our, our budgeted uh, budgeted uh, uh, scope of this project, so um, we don't look at it as an extra two hundred thousand. It is an additional two hundred thousand from the low bid to the high bid, but um, it's there's really no s absolute smoking gun to tell you exactly. Okay. So, but ultimately, you guys will decide well, which. Could you address contract. it? Because Kirsten's not here, but she specifically said the quality of the work mm -hmm. from the workers. She gives a specific reason because okay, Commissioner Anzorgi did ask, and I also asked, why would we spend 200 extra thousand dollars just because it's in the budget? It still is actual money that's coming from the taxpayers. So why did she emphatically recommend 200 thousand dollars, 205 thousand extra be spent? I mean, it came from you and her. You, yeah. you were hired to be our consultants, to do the vetting, to go through the process. And, and that's what I was looking forward to, and that's what I remember. Yeah. But it seemed to me that it was confidence to get the work done. The in the quality of time, in the schedule. So I just took that yeah. to be just coming from professional knowledge of, mm -hmm. of other things having worked with the companies other times. And that's all, it's all I took yeah. from it, but I don't. Yeah. I'll be blunt with you. We hired you, we're paying you a fee to be our consultants to do this project for us. Yes. Her response in general terms, I want to speak to her because this is not my field of expertise, is yes. she thought ABI can meet the timelines more accurately with no uh, overruns, and also there was the quality of the work. She concerned there'd be change orders coming from hers. Those are, in my, as I remember, those were the issues that she brought up. Right. We sign a contract with a, a uh, you know, a vendor to provide this service for X dollar amounts, and they misestimated how much labor it costs to do it. We don't have to pay extra because they made an error in their estimating. They, they are obligated to perform the work at the price performed. Isn't, isn't, isn't that the case? You know, if they made a bad estimate and it costs more, they're on the hook for the overrun. Is that just common sense? Yes, that is uh, that is correct, okay. Commissioner. Answering. Thank you, <laughs> Commissioner Locke. Could could we take a moment and hear from both companies again briefly? Sure. I mean, that, we're making a big decision here, so I think anybody we want to hear from, we should. 
So I think, well, Mr. Hurst spoke at, and uh, Hearst Company spoke at public comment. Do they have anything they want to add at this point? Well, let's, 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 let's get you done with this witness. If anybody has any questions. Okay. Now, are you done with this witness? I, 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 you know, I, that's what I'm saying. You know, don't make him bounce up and down. Oh, yeah. poor John. <laughs> Commissioner Lautner has the floor. Didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> did you did you want to ask them a question? Um, no questions specifically. Specifically, but is there anything more Hearst would like to say at this point before we move on? If I may. And then I would like to hear from Mr. ABI. So that's going to happen, right? Yeah. Well, that's well okay. I, th I think we can do that when we're, we're done with, with, with this. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Because I'm ready to move on. <laughs> Historically, have you found that uh, if you hire a company, for X amount of dollars and that company comes back with change orders and you tell them like Ms. Commissioner Ansardi says, hey, you told us you'd do it for this amount, so it's on you. You need to finish the project in order to get the rest of the pay. The problem with that kind of operation is now you get an employer who has to send employees up to a job and the employer is going to eat that cost. So the performance, and I'm not pointing out any one of these. Understand. I'm, it's just a hypothetical. Mm -hmm. The performance usually that is received by the customer is not the highest standard. So that raises a concern for me. If the project, uh, if the company can't meet the project requirements for the bid that they presented and they've been told they're not getting the extra, there's no overruns, uh, and they find that they made a mistake, sure, they're going to have to eat it, but then what's the quality that we're going to get as a client? And that's the only thing I wanted to bring to the table. Commissioner West. Uh, I'd like an answer to my question about the July 23rd uh, communication from Mr. Janet, where he said that he received word from, from Hertz that the company was not provided the opportunity to be interviewed by the consultant or the engineering team. And then the response from Kirsten said they did interview and uh, did review. So two different two different statements of fact, only one of those can be true. I believe it was a telephone interview only. Yes. Yes. They, um, it was not an interview in person talking about the uh, uh, specifics of the project. We, we understood that, that they had met our requirements that of what was drawn, that we didn't have any concerns with either company uh, providing uh, equipment or traditional questions. Then, so. then I don't know why we would, if you had no concern, there was no issue with either company, why we would sit here and say, we're going to pay 200000 extra. Because that, uh, that's a significant interest payment on that loan we were talking about doing. So I, 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 I am troubled by this, and, and I believe that we should uh, uh, reconsider who does our project. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, you know, I mean, uh, maybe I've read into this or not, but my, my understanding of it is that if someone has underbidded, that it ends up creating problems and the job gets held up. Mm -hmm. They, they'll, you know, and, and they, this wasn't stated, but yeah, that, that I can see, I can understand and see how that happens because if they're at a job where they're not making any money, they'll send someone to a job where they're making money and then we'll fill in with the job where they're not making any money. And I, and I, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but if that, if that, there wasn't enough labor provided in the project, you, you know, they would, the, the, our advisor would fear that, that job, the job could get held up by the fact that there isn't enough labor in it. And that's, it doesn't mean they wouldn't do it for the amount that they said, 
because they, they would, but but our, the whole project could be held up and she felt this was under a time contract. I would add to that because that's my, not to put words in Kristen's mouth, but right. that's how I remembered it. It's basically she was saying, you have hired us to give you our professional uh, advice and counsel on how to move this project forward in a timely manner and that based on their experience and knowledge of the companies they were sure they could meet the time constraints with the recommendations they were making that's what I took from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Hanson. I understand the logic that could apply to any bid including the higher bid. They could come back and say, oh God, we made a mistake on this. That same logic could apply for the higher price bid as well. That they could say, oh God, we made a mistake. We're going to send people you know, to the jobs we make money on and not this job. It doesn't matter. In my opinion, it doesn't matter because that could happen in either case, in, in this case. So, I still don't have a good answer on why we would spend $205,000 more than we need to. I mean, I, I think the same thing could be applied than you say to the, um, the electrical one. Exactly. Any one of them could say it. You could add that line. Because that was 70000 the other one was twenty three seven. You know, you're talking another $40-some-thousand. But that's why we hired them to give us advice because we can make these decisions based on money alone, and that's not always the wisest thing to do. Fortunately. Any other statements? Yes. But I'm, but I'm hearing that even though there was a concern about the labor, there wasn't an opportunity for the bidder to defend their price. And as Kirsten believed that maybe they had under-budgeted, there should have been an interview uh, where that was discussed because we lost an opportunity maybe to spend $200,000 less. Didn't you say it was discussed by phone? Yes, Kirsten with, did with discuss to, with both companies to get a, a clearer picture of how their bid was made up and I think she as I understand, she uh, she went with what information she was provided, and and uh, she made her you know we talked and we made a recommendation based on what was given to us, and and that's that was the ABI people. But I mean, ultimately, it is you guys that will make that decision. Uh, we were just giving you a recommendation. Mr. <clears throat> I would like to move that Leelanau County Board of Commissioners approve an agreement between the County of Leelanau and ABI Mechanical in an amount not to exceed $2,374,000 as presented, subject to corporate council review and approval, funds to come from Capital Projects Fund 470. Second. <clears throat> Okay, um, I'm just trying to get the ball rolling here and move on. We can go back and forth here all day, but when, it, when, it, when I look at this whole project and we have hired a company to help advise us, after listening to Kirsten the other day, I have to believe that her confidence in this company means something. We have uh, an amount not to exceed so that uh, also leads me to believe that this company probably has built, probably has built a contingency in there of some kind. Therefore, it's going to be my hope that it comes in something less than this amount as they get in and, and get the project going. That's my reason for the motion. It's on the floor. Commissioner Rush. Uh, I was just going to question if the board would like to hear from uh, both companies at this time before we make a vote. I was hoping that by putting motion on the floor now we can ask them to speak to it if they choose to. It's up to the chair. Yeah, 
I mean, I, I guess then we're, we're through with you, and then if they yes. wanted to come forward. Yes, I'll be available here All right. if, okay. if you need me. Thank you. Did either one want to come forward to speak? I'll go first or second? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for allowing us to speak, definitely. Uh, ABI and Hearst Mechanical are both very good contractors. We, we don't get here by not being good contractors. And our reputation, their reputation is, you know, very good, both of us. So you're not going to go wrong with either, either contractor. Uh, in speaking to some of the comments that were made, uh, and I'd like Jamin to speak on it because he was the one that actually went through the interview, correct? So, you, yes. so Jamin can talk to uh, a couple of things that happened there. From, from what I understood, because I wasn't in the interview, is that it was one that is not a normal post-bid interview. Number one, it was over the phone. Typically, it's in a meeting uh, state. Uh, also, the questions that were asked were not uh, a normal review of a project. So, th so from that, that was from my understanding of talking to Jamin on that. The phone interview last, lasted less than five minutes. And then I was asked to give uh, a breakdown of materials, which I was given more less than two hours to do. And I did it to the best of my ability. But at the end of the day, I mean, to your point, we agreed to do the job for X amount. And as far as the labor goes, uh, sending labor, uh, no, we send labor out to the job. They don't know who was low, who was high, who was in the middle. Uh, they're professionals. And, and they wouldn't know in the midst of the job, had the job not been making money or they were, we were out of hours or something like that. The guys in the field wouldn't know that. They would just do the job, you know, as they see fit. And, and the other comment on a contingency, uh, it's a bid spec type job. We don't throw in a content. We do a, we do a ton of design build all across the, the state. And with that, yeah, there's a set dollar amount for contingency amount. But when you have a bid spec, you are bidding. You're going to put this piece of pipe in from this spot to that spot. So you don't put in an extra fifty dollars to oh, because it might not be that way. Okay. I was just wondering if your labor is union or non-union labor. We go ahead. We are a union company. Okay. And we pull ABI and us. We pull from the same gene pool. We see from the same mm -hmm. same union, same labor pool. That's why I asked the question. We, yeah. we have employees that work for us that have worked there before, and they've vice versa. Okay. Again, both great contractors. Um, you know, I wouldn't say anything bad about uh, ABI ever. Not at all. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Would you come forward, please? I wasn't prepared to speak, but Ken got here with ABI Mechanical. Uh, I put the bid together. I'll, I'm the project manager for the bid. Our foreman is Chris Colder that lives up in Leelanau County. Uh, Bob Schaub lives in Leelanau County. He's going to be working on the project. Uh, I lived and breathed this job for two weeks. So I came up here at the walkthrough and it was, you know, fantastic uh, job. Uh, there's some things that are on the plan that don't show water lines, other, you know, areas. I have those covered. You know, I came up here and looked at it. Um, hanging the uh, chilled beams, there's no detail to hang them, but they got to be hung. We have all that in there. Uh, I, I'm working with. You're buying the air handler uh, pre-purchased. I'm already working with the supplier to get it uh, shipped differently in the split so it'll go through the doors. It would have arrived bigger than the door openings. I'm working with them uh, right now on that. Uh, I've done a lot of work on the job. I'm just, I'm very confident. Um, I'm, I don't know about her spin. You know, we'll put it together. Uh, there is a con contingency in there for the fire suppression because he's got 47 uh, heat pumps that the fire suppression lines may have to be moved. If they don't have to be moved, there will be money given back. Um, there's a $50,000 ceiling allowance in our uh, a bid. So if we don't use all that, that money comes back. So there is some money built in there. And I've worked with uh, you know our subs 
hired on this job. Every one of our subs has come through up here and walked through this building and uh, they understand the job pretty good. And just for clarification, are your employees union or non-union? Uh, union. All are yes. union? Yeah, we're a member of Local 85. Any other All questions for right. Mr. Watson? Thanks for being here. Yeah. In your bid, is there anything that you're providing in terms of materials or, or, or detail that wasn't covered in the bid from the other bid? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know who put their bid together. I don't know what they have. In I'm, I'm assuming the specs were there. So you, well, the, the specs bidding, are there, but there, you know, there's some things like the water to the humidifiers that's not detailed out or anything like that. And that's, you know, we need to get water there. I got to have something in there for our bid. My, my point so. is, I would assume that that both firms knew that they had to get water to, to the system and built that into their plans. Yeah, I don't, I can't speak for hers, but you know, I mean. I'm assuming you came up and took a look in person so that you were familiar with any unusual. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Yep, that's why I knew the door openings weren't, you know, I mean, we got the, the submittals from the, for the air handlers and the air handlers were going to come with different shipping splits and they wouldn't have fit through the doors. So if they would have arrived here, it's, I don't know if, it's you, right? if they would have arrived here, they would have been too big to fit through the doors, would have caused extra work and everything. And we're working with the pre-purchased equipment suppliers right now to alleviate any problems like that. So, and I understand you to say that your subcontractors that are going to work on this all came through as well. All what? That your subcontractors came through and took a look yes. in person as well. Yep. Yep. Our sheet metal contractor, insulator. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. That's it. I, uh, any other questions? Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. I have, if I may, a oh. question for hers. Oh, Not for her. hers. Yes. Go ahead. My question is, th did you come up and personally look at it? And yeah, did you absolutely. have your contractors yeah, look I, at it I as well? I put them in together and I, I did. I came and looked at it as well. I was just wondering because I know you said you had to put your bid in in two hours. So I, I wondered no, if you... So to clarify that, I had to give the labor and material breakdown and I had two hours to do that. But which I did give a schedule of values that laid out. If you're not familiar with the schedule of values, it says boiler material price, boiler labor price, chiller labor price, chiller material price. It lays out everything that, uh, you know, subcontractors, I mean, I have that same allowance in there for ceilings. I have an allowance in there for fire protection, you know, and I laid all that out. And your contractors came up, your subcontractors, and took a look? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. We had, I think, was it, Jerry, was it two pre-bid walkthroughs? No, I don't think so. So we had two. And we had a large group of subcontractors here, so I think we'll cover that. Well, I, I just had one question then for, for John. You, you, you said it was within uh, the parameters of your bids, but what you said, it, I mean, the, the, the parameter was 1919000 So ABI's is actually 400000 above that. And and uh, Hearst is two hundred thousand above it. So, but you're saying a considerable—that's a considerable difference to me. It's not really within that for those parameters. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 maybe I heard you wrong, but that's what I, I remember. No, I. I I don't know the specifics of the bid. Uh, I think that Kirsten had gone through and said that she was over in some areas but under in others and I think the overall yeah. my my statement is more into the overall scope cost of the entire project not specific areas uh, okay because I thought the overall we talked about was 3.3 3, and then we're at 3.6 right we've got built in a contingency that is okay. But uh, well, I mean, I, I just having here that's with the contingency, it was 3.4, I guess. Right, right. No, so, I, my statement is I, I think we're not contractors, so we don't know the exact number, yeah. but you can expect us. I would say we were really close to the ballpark of what it was going to be, maybe 
it's okay. plus or minus a, a percent of sort. Right. But it always seems to be over. That's <laughs> that's yes. the problem. Yes. So I don't know. Were there any other questions for, for John? Okay. So we do have a motion on, on the floor for ABI. And no one has any other questions? I don't have any questions, but we still in discussion? Yes. Go ahead. I've heard nothing from either of the contractors to justify paying an additional $205,000. So I will not be supporting the motion because it's $205,000. I, uh, I, I feel the same way and I also uh, would like the message to Kirsten that at least one commissioner is unhappy with, uh, with, uh, with the whole process and the services and knowing that, knowing that there was an issue today uh, which should have been addressed more forcefully and Kirsten should have been here. I will not support this motion. Well, I'm not going to support it, but I don't support the whole project, so <laughs> so it's not about either contractor. So, um, if there's one question that you know maybe uh, we understand that Hearst is not happy with how the post bid, but I don't know maybe Ken could Hugh could at least say his opinion, being the other contractor, if he felt it was a reasonable yeah, post have, bid. Yes, yeah, so we have phone interviews all the time. On, on job. Person asked for information on labor. Could we step to the table so I yeah, can hear yeah. I'm sorry. I think the part of this. Yeah, we have phone interviews all the time, and, that, and then she asked for information. I provided the information uh, that she asked for. Within an hour, I got her all the uh, breakdowns of uh, our labor and materials and what we had in our, our cost wise. Um, and yeah, and it, it, that wasn't the only phone call. I had, you know, there was more than one phone call with Kirsten. I mean, if she had, the initial phone call probably lasted, you know, five or ten minutes, and then there was other phone calls that she wanted, and that she needed more information. So, you know, it, it's a process. So I can see why she didn't have a meeting with, you know, in person, uh, by phone, email, and, you know, and even text messages. So um, I, I thought it went well. I, I did. That was just one point I felt like we didn't hear the other side. <laughs> well, that's good. No, I appreciate uh, that. To at least back up Kirsten's uh, post bit interview, so I, I figured that was something you should hear. <laughs> does, uh, does our administrator have anything to add to this process as uh, he uh, was involved with, uh, I think, resolving uh, the initial uh, just what I stated, I talked to both Kirsten, John, the reps from Hearst, got different versions of what happened. It is basically the perspective of how the vetting went. Hearst was concerned that they were given, as you stated, less than a half hour. It was a phone call. It was not in person. They were concerned that that not give them an opportunity to fully express their views. Kirsten said she did call them, and she vetted them. The she agreed it was a fairly sh short process, though. She did state that because I asked her that how long was it. There may be some slight difference of opinions on how long it lasted, but I think both parties agreed it was less than half an hour. Total dialogue on the project. It is a two point two multi million dollar project. Any other questions or statements or anything? I would ask for a roll call on this, please. Yeah. <clears throat> and Commissioner Lautner. Commissioner Lautner? Yes. Commissioner Rentenbach? No. Commissioner Rushton? Yes. Commissioner Sotislittle? Yes. Commissioner Wessel? No. Commissioner Bunnick? No. Commissioner Ansorgi? No. Motion fails 3-4. Okay, so that would be, it. you know, then do we want to have another motion or anything? Because this is to try to decide if we're going to do this project or not. Commissioner West. I, 
I, I don't think we're ready for another motion at this time. I think we need Kirsten here, and I think we need to uh, reconsider the the, uh, the contract. But we have the bids. I mean, we have the bids, and we know what they are. So, but I think we, we have the recommendation. I think we need our expert here to answer, to relook at those bids and and address questions about those bids. Well, you could stop the entire project, or if you wish to go forward, you can approve the other parts and then have a meeting to talk about the mechanical, but mechanical is the major part of the project. The major part? Yeah. I agree. And so okay, then, I mean, that is a critical thing. part of the, if you don't have agreement on the, a majority on the mechanical, it's difficult to go forward with everything else. Then do we, we want to go on then to the budget, or do we? What do you want to do? You, you know? could, if you want to get yourself another meeting, you have one scheduled for next. On the six. The sixth and the eighth, I believe, right? It's in the budget meeting on the eighth also. Okay. A workshop. Mm -hmm. The eighth might be a better one. I would like to move to recess for uh, ten minutes. Okay. Yeah, it's been a think about so That's a good idea. Take a 10 minute recess. Can you call this meeting back to order, please? We will have. All right. So, do we have any other recommendations about the HVAC? I have another question for John. And I just know you can answer this right off the top of your head. What, what we would like to know is what is the impact of the tariffs on this particular bid? I don't believe that they're, I don't think they're a substantial, uh, I don't think that it changes this, the, the tariffs. The, uh, the majority of the materials are American made. I don't believe that we're looking at something that tariffs have an issue. Okay, great, thank you. That's all I got. I know you could answer us right off the top. Jerry, did you want to talk? Yes. Yeah, Jerry wanted to address us here, too. Sorry, I, sorry I didn't get you here before the vote. No. Good afternoon. My name is Jerry Coleman. I'm the maintenance director, Vidal County, 39 years. Uh, the reason I've been watching, talking uh, for some time, and no one ever asked me my opinion. They all assumed. And uh, I've been in a lot of discussion with Gary O'Connor, who's done our work for us, and I've never found a better person cares more about the county than myself and some others, but that knows what to do and how to take care of us, and he has. And, he's, and I talked to him and I said I just feel that looking at what's going on, the kind of money we're talking, more importantly, we all know that everything goes bad after a while. We don't know when. I can attest to that personally. Uh, and one day if things aren't running great, everything's smooth, the next day it goes down. Do we replace the whole system for a better system, maybe? Yes, we could. But for average, I figure 14,000 high end to pull the units, we have six right now, you're looking about 80,000 to pull the four units, five, or five units, five or six, let's see, six units right now. Um, and you figure um, 80,000, six units, 80, or 100,000 for 10, you know? And we just, I just feel that uh, at this point in time, if no money has, not a lot of money has been let right now, let. Uh, my personal opinion is that we, on the maintenance side, continue taking care of what we have. It does work. 
I am not saying, you wonder why, I'm not saying that it's the perfect system we have, but it does work. Okay, we have a few cool, we've got cold spots and whatnot, that is true. They pulled the baseboard heating when they built the building. Okay, that's a given. But uh, maybe we've got to replace boilers or whatever down the line, but like I said, things, everything's gonna fail. Even the new equipment's gonna fail one day, and they'll be readdressing the situation possibly. I, we all don't know. All these companies that are here, the two companies, are Powell Engineering, they're great people. They've done a wonderful job. Why did not I come forward sooner? Did it matter? Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But um, I feel that um, how things are going right now, um, and there's a lot of different things in play here. Will it hurt for us to wait? No. Will it hurt for us to fix what we have? No. I've got 30-some thousand I'm looking at next year just for the asphalt work out here, which is every three years. But to do it better, it's going to cost more money than the 13 we paid three, four years ago. So we've got bigger cracks, et cetera. There's other things going on, too, and I understand that. It's just part of maintenance. But the bottom line here is uh, we have to pay people who we pay and say thank you and move on. That's your call. Uh, I understand that. Why didn't I come forward? I apologize for not because I wasn't ready and I don't think anything, just major decisions have been made up to this point. So, uh, you know, I just wanted you to know that I feel uh, that we could spend 15,000, eight or eight, 15,000 per se per unit that we have. We have six down right now. Other things are coming up. There's a lot of what ifs, like uh, uh, Commissioner Rushton has said, and, and some of the others, and uh, we don't know. But um, I just feel we might, we can get by for a while. I really do, at this point in time. And study things more, maybe another year, two years. We can go after it again, but we have uh, everything in play right now, or we have a foundation to work off of. You know. That's just my opinion, okay? But when it comes to fixing these units, then we need to go after it and um, get it taken care of. That's kind of the way I like to work, as you know, cutting holes in the wall and et cetera. <coughs> we won't go there, right, Melinda? Yeah. But it worked, anyway. Okay. Yeah. So, but that's all I had to say, and uh, I, I do apologize in a way, but then again, I just didn't want to come forward and start shoot my mouth off about something until I finally s could see everything and how things are working. So, your call, but that's my opinion, personal opinion. Any questions for Jerry? No. Oh, you sure answer. Go ahead. This is going back to our original discussion. We can afford to spend $200,000 a year fixing this current system, adding to it or whatever. And, and, and not spend any more money than we would spending 3.6 today, don't have to borrow any money. I don't think we should do a damn thing other than fix what we got and look at fixing the things that should have been installed originally. And I think it's a, you know, it's not an emergency. We don't have anybody dying of mold or anything like that. Um, again, we could spend $200,000 a year for a long, long time and still be ahead of the game and borrowing money today for 3.6 million. Thank you. My question is, is for Commissioner Ansari. When you say fix the things that aren't there, do you mean put in baseboards, baseboarding heat or what? What were you meaning? Just we have so six understand. heat pumps down today. Right. Replace those six heat pumps look at a project to put in the baseboard that should have been installed That's originally. What I That's what I thought. You know, you can phase all this stuff in over a long period of time and still have a, a good system. And you're going to get brand new heat pumps that are more efficient than the old ones that are dying now. Thank and you. It was, it was, I thought you were implying yeah. putting the baseboard heating. That is what you were. And I, I, you know, I would, you, that doesn't have to be done Today, we right. can look at that as a project and schedule it as an incremental project rather than one huge, giant, $3.6 million fiasco. Any other comments? 
Seeing none, then we'll move. Yes, Commissioner Lautner. Did, did you <coughs> were you just going to say we're moving on to budget? Yes. Then I, I have a um, clarification question, I guess, or maybe a... I have a question on process. We've got a motion on the on the floor to approve the project. I mean, we got a motion that we have passed at this meeting yeah. to move this project forward. And I'm not hearing a lot of confidence in that at this time. As much as we've studied this, we still seem to have a lot of, of questions on the project. So what what is in order then at this time, if that's the case? Leave that motion standing and, and move forward, or do we want to put a hold on this project today? Well, of course, we would like to suggest that we add this to a special meeting agenda to talk about whether you want to go forward with ABI, whether you want to go with HERS, or whether you want to continue with the project. So what you're saying is if we have not approved the contractors, it's not moving forward anyway? Well, there's no legal, no, because you, have, you haven't allocated any money. You authorized the project and the partial funding of it, but you have not signed any contract, you have not ordered any equipment. You have not signed a contract with 3D to be the project manager. Okay. So at that point, you have not done that. So the idea is we're going to talk about this at another meeting. Really, the critical part, I think we all agree, is we have to decide on the mechanical contract. If you approve a contract with the mechanical contract, with the mechanical contractor, I assume you're going to approve the other contracts and the purchase orders. It would not make any sense to approve a contract with a mechanical contractor and not do the rest. But if you don't approve the mechanical contractor, it sort of does not make sense to go forward with the purchase it orders will, and start ordering my, equipment. My point exactly. I just know that there, there's a certain amount of time that if we are not going to move forward with this project, we need to rescind, and it has to be yeah. done in a certain but, process but we're okay. for rescinding. We're okay with that? Because okay. really, you have, not all, you have not spent any money. It could be, I mean, I'm just throwing this out. You go that money not to exceed. It could be the renovations. It doesn't have to be this specific design. It could be something with Commissioner Amsler we stated. You know, okay. So you do have lots of options. That's a good, very good point. Okay. But you do need to make some decisions because these bids are not going to be out there for I forever. Mm -hmm. And in terms of to meet our guideline too, we really should have a meeting. Either well, you have one scheduled on the sixth. You have one scheduled on the eighth or right. Right. So is this the time that we should set that that meeting? Now? I think it would be good. It'd be helpful. So the meeting on uh, um, meeting at six, I believe, is at what time, Laurel? Three o'clock. Three o'clock. And then the one on the eighth is at nine. I, I don't. I think it's nine. I, I think so. Yeah. It makes sense to follow that one. Okay. I don't think you want another special meeting to have a. No. No. So like one of those two dates. We okay, could do so that one at nine and then do budget following would be the most on logical. The mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well or on the sixth we could just move it up earlier. Well we would have the sixth because three. some people couldn't do it before three. Well that's does okay, your choices are nine o'clock on the eighth, knowing it's gonna be longer because it's gonna be this plus the budget, or do it on the sixth and start to mean before three. But I think some people had maybe conflicts. That's why we yeah. said it at three. And we're all going to need to be here for this. Yes. So I, I'm good with the nine o'clock on the eight. Yeah. I mean, all of you agree, but it's going to be longer than you probably mm -hmm. originally anticipated. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, it is what I'm, it is. I'm just thinking, though, that if we do it on the sixth, if there's still questions and still things, then we can also have the eight again to, to address it again. We could do it following our special meeting. Well, you could start yeah. the meeting at 3 o'clock just... Right, it'll just go... No, you're not going to be done. Yeah. Commissioner uh, Russell. Sorry. I think it's important that Kirsten be here. So mm -hmm. if I think either one that she could make... Yeah. Either one that she could well, make, but we need her here. I have no idea where she's at now. Could we call her? Uh, yeah, well, I don't think she's... I, I she's out in Seattle. Okay. Her phone probably works in Seattle, though, doesn't it? Well, she's fishing. <laughs> 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 can you at least call and find out? I can find out. Yes, I can. If we, if we do it on the 6th, I would say we do it after. Yes. That would be the second thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Fine with me. After is fine with me. I 
Well, maybe we proceed and see what John finds out. Mm -hmm. Right, see if she can be there. That would be the thing. Hey, Kirsten, uh, they were, uh, I'm in the meeting and they, uh, they want to know if you would be available on the 6th of, of August. Or the 8th. Week. Is that, is that some, you, you, you will be available? Okay. How about the 8th? And then also the 8th, the if not the 6th. You'll be available both days, right? Okay, yeah, she's good. Um, I'll let you know. <laughs> All right, thanks, Kirsten. So I, I did, does someone want to make a motion to move it to the 6th and after the early childhood development discussion? That's fine with me. So you make I would make the motion to uh, add the uh, discussion of the HVAC system here at the governmental center to the August 6th meeting after the early childhood development discussion. Okay. I don't know. It's a special meeting, and can we do that? Yeah. Can well, I okay. Changed or you can, but you have to sign. You have to redo the post and redo. Yeah. Can you do it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So just tell us when you want to meet. We'll take care of the legal. Okay. Yeah. Just just as we did for the HVAC onto this one, because this was really just a budget meeting. Yeah. So we can take care of that. The just is but a work meeting. The, other, this, the budget is a work meeting. No, this, this we will schedule it. No. Have to set out a new agenda. We will we'll take care of details. Okay. Tell us when you want to meet. Laura and I will take care of the okay. details. All right. We have a motion and a second. Everybody understands what it is. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Thank you. <laughs> so, me will be on, just so I'm sure I'm clear. Yes. So, on the 6th, so okay. after. So, we'll, we'll, we'll look. After okay. early childhood. Okay, so Laura and I will take care of the details. All right. All right, then that would bring us to budget. So, we're so through the Can I hear it very much? Let me get Jen and we can. Okay. She was waiting for me to talk. All the other folks. Looks like them. We do. Is that your part, too? No, I think it's from the unions. <laughs> Yeah, you're probably right. It looks pretty nice. Don't tell Jim I said that. A little bigger than some of mine, maybe. Uh, it's kind of hot in here. <laughs> nice pictures on the basket. Check it real close because there's probably extra hundred dollar bills stuffed in it. <laughs> Jen's on her way. But you showed me one here the other night. <laughs> 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 Chuck's going to do all the talking anyway. Oh, you <laughs> Whoa! Get over here, Chuck. Get your book. Oh, it's in there. No, that's from your book. Let me see what's on his cover. Yeah. Everybody has a road. John has the beach in the back. Oh. I, got, I got apple blossoms. Mm -hmm. And I have a good harbor, thank you. <laughs> I have a robust travel. On the front. All right. I got the high road. The high road, is. Yes. Let me start by, first of all, thanking Chad and Michelle. They spent many weekends, and John will agree, I don't think, on this. Yeah. That they, uh, with anything else going on, and they were short staffed by two people for most of the last two months. And I know personally they have been here on weekends, many of weekends, because I can tell because Michelle sends out emails on Saturday and Sunday 
texted that she's in the office doing this and this. So thank you, Jen, for all of that. You're welcome. So even last Sunday, I know you were in here. So this does take a lot of work to put this book together. So uh, thank you very much. And, uh, I think the staff has been very diligent in trying to keep the budget in line. Uh, virtually all departments are just submitting what they have proposed in the past overall, and we'll go over the details, but it, in terms of the new things in the budget, and you'll get a memo on it, so you don't take notes on this, I'm going to cross the right memo, but Jen and I, and John and Michelle and Matt, and uh, I came up with some notes on some unique requests for 2020. That seems like such a long ways off, 2020, it just doesn't come out. Naturally. In the year 2525. Oh, 2525. Yeah, we got five more questions. Well, for the year 2525. Kathy, I'm putting dividers in mine. <laughs> we're dating ourselves by remembering that song. But, um, okay. So we had the whole budget process, and today we're not expecting to go through this and so forth. But uh, Jen promised us that we'd be done by 8 o'clock. It's absolutely right. That's right. We'll take a break. What's your first page look like? But uh, just a general overview. Uh, in okay. terms of what's in the book and what's not in the book, in terms of requests, and I said I will put this all in a memo to you. But what is in the book, new, is four vehicles from the sheriff's department. We did have MERS additional MERS payment of two hundred fifty thousand dollars that's built into. So when Jen started talking about revenues, expenses, we did build in four vehicles from Mobile and the MERS extra payment of $250,000. That is in there. But what is not in the budget is contract negotiation is salary increases. So steps are built in, but any type of salary increases are not. In fact, uh, I just talked to Peter Cole this morning about the process of starting negotiations. Past history is the unit will probably want to wait till October, November, maybe December to start the process. Yeah. But there are no pay increases built in. So at some point, assuming we have contracts, uh, we will have to am amend this right from the beginning. Uh, another thing that's come up is uh, last year the prosecutor submitted a stop grant partnership with the Women's Resource Center. That position was never filled. He, ac he actually never posted it. So that is not in the budget because we're not sure what his plans are. He did not submit it. Uh, it's not in the budget. He chose for whatever reason not to even post a job last year. So I'm not actually sure how they're covering those, those services. And I don't think they have received a grant, have they? No. No. So that's not in the budget. And what services was that for? That was, Jen? It was a, it's like a women's resource uh, grant to help um, with PPOs and domestic violence and, and those kind of situations for both male and females. As you probably remember, Stacey Lamb did that on a contract mm -hmm. basis for a number of years. years. Mm -hmm. Long been here. She chose not to do that anymore. Joe came to the board asking for increases for his staff. The response was no. And he had chosen not to pursue any other option, to the best of my knowledge. So, so that's not in the grant. One thing that's not in there that uh, you'll get my update this evening is some potential major cost with dam authority. Uh, the dam authority had a special meeting this yesterday. With the high water levels, there's actually water coming into the control room. It's about two inches. I have a link that you can click on to see some photos. But also, there was an inspection done by OSHA. He did not cite us, but he came up with recommendations of safety issues with the dam. And uh, the dam authority asked Patrick Machin to put together a proposal just to do a feasibility study or an engineering study of what needs to be done to address the water issue as well as the safety recommendations from OSHA. The study alone is $20,000, almost $19,000 some dollars. So one thing, and John and I were at the dam meeting yesterday, yeah. and we told him, well, we know how Christian State, we need to, a dollar amount, how much you're talking about even get the work done. And two, if we're going to do this, there should be an assessment to the lake. It's a lake assessment. Uh, so today, John and I and Steve Christian had a conference call with our legal counsel to make sure we know exact process if you choose to do that. The process not changed because there is a court mandated lake assessment district already set up. It's actually much easier to get this process done. So we're working on that. I just want you to be prepared. 
even though it's not on the budget, there could be some significant dollars for the dam. If we have to go back for an assessment for that assessment district, the lake assessment district, we should look at everything that needs to be done, not well, just. Yes, we <laughs> thank you. Did we just have the same discussion? Yes. Okay. No. And I told Steve and, and he agree that if we're going to do it, come up with a long-term plan. So they're not coming back to you every single year. Come up with a long-term plan. The example I use, I live on a private road. I get assessed every year. It's the same amount every year. We just had our entire road blacktop again. We're not paying any difference because that was built into the budget. And so John and I are both urging them, the dam authority, come up with a long-term plan, let's say 10 years. So the homeowners there know exactly what's going to be. What you don't want to do is come back every other year with some different amounts or them coming to the board every year saying, well, we need this project or halfway through the year coming and say, oh, by the way, this just came up. Come up with a long-term plan so everyone knows in advance, secure funding source. And I think the Lake Association people would appreciate knowing that also. Yes. So that's going to be a major, I don't have any numbers yet. We hope to have some numbers to you by the August 13 executive, at least a ballpark number of what they're talking about. Because if it's 20,000 just to do the study, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And it's very technical, precise work that very few companies can perform. Is that in process right now? The recognition will be coming to you in the August 13th. to approve the study. engineering. Yes. Okay. We did check. We can get, recover those costs through a special assessment. We can't do the work and then do a special assessment. Oh, okay. Just like with this project, like John said, with the, you can't do it and then all of a sudden get bonds to pay Got back. Mm -hmm. But so those type of fees can be covered. The work sounds like it's all infrastructure. Yes. So it'll be on that actual building where the... Yes, and the, and the actual dam, yeah. which is part of the corridor, so there's no question. I was wondering, is it on the dam or is it It's on the some both. No, oh. Some both. Well, I just want you to know that's coming. I don't have any numbers for you. We'll have more information by the August 13th Executive Committee meeting. Will you back up uh, when you talked about salary increases? You talked about the union negotiations yes. not until this fall. Uh, so those salaries are not in the budget. Are there other... Uh, no increase. No increase for anybody. Okay, for anybody. That was my question. the board has not approved any increase for non-salary. Correct. You did for two years, but that expired. So there has to be a motion. As you remember in the past, yes. the contracts have to be approved. Both sides have to agree and sign them. But also for the non-union, the board has to pass a resolution to increase the... Yes, state. I just wanted to yeah. be clear on that. I didn't know if there was... Step increases are in there. Step yes. increases are, are built in. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yes. But in on the dam assessment, the previous time, it was the entire county. 50% of the cost went to the lake. Fund properties, 50% of the cost went to the entire county. Yeah, county. you're going to have to talk about how you want to do that. Right, and, and that really did create, you know, especially like Glen Lake was paying for Lake Leo and all, they didn't really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go, we're not to that point. We're saying we do have the legal ability, the Lake Associating District is set up by court order. So it's, it would be a much, much longer and tedious of run off process to set up a special assessment district. We don't have to do that. Our attorneys no. confirmed that. The boundaries are in place. We'll have to redo those because there have probably been property splits from the last time assessment, but the actual boundary of the assessment district is in place by court order. Commissioner Anthony. I know that there's requirements with the state for every dam, you know, yeah. X number of years and all yeah. this kind of stuff. So uh, hopefully they will look at that to say, you know, Maybe we do a special assessment for a five-year period yeah. to cover, or 20, 10 yes. years, whatever the period, to cover all those expected costs that we're going to have associated with that. This data. is exactly what John and I were insisting that they do. Don't just come up with a short term. The last, because the last assessment, there was a hefty surplus, which they have used year after year, but that money's gone. Mm -hmm. And so, as you remember, this past two years, Every time there's some cost, they come back to you. And it's difficult to plan. So John are saying, think exactly what you're saying. Plan long term. Come up with a long term plan, and then let's divide over X number of years, and so we know exactly what the costs are. 
but you'll be hearing much more about that. Also, not in the budget, if the grant is approved, is the Sheriff's Great Lakes vote. That's $118,000. When are we supposed to hear on that? Uh, usually by September. Could be as late as end of September. So October 1st is the deadline date because that's when new budget starts. So somewhere, anywhere between now and could be September 30th, I guess. The last two years, it's been the beginning of September. Did the sheriff, does the sheriff still have the opportunity to apply for the grant that he had uh, talked about from a private? The foundation? Yeah. Uh, well, he, we had some discussion about that just in the last week. He is confident, but no commitment is made. Okay. That a, I, I don't know if it's an individual as a foundation, but yes, a foundation. At least the sheriff has had some discussion with a foundation about covering that cost. Obviously, though, it's contingent on scaling up, so it's, it's at this point. But right. We have to plan yeah. on it. Yeah. Commissioner West. Are there still negotiations going on with uh, Glen Arbor Township on their boat? And is the sheriff uh, met about it? The about sheriff it? and Commissioner Rettenbach and I met with the township supervisor Friday. It appears, and I'm using my words carefully, maybe the township supervisor was a little too ambitious with his potential donation. So we're trying to get that clarified. I certainly don't want to go public and create a controversy within the township or between the township and the county. So Commissioner Buttock, Commissioner Runbach has talked to different individuals in the township and they have a little different perspective. So we need to get that resolved first before we go forward. Obviously we would be very interested the sheriff did admit that the township vote is much nicer than any vote that he currently has. It's not what he wants, but it's nicer than <coughs> what he has. What size? So what size is that? Twenty-seven one? foot. What kind of boat is it? Uh, I'm not a boat person. It's a rather white boat. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Especially made. It's a. Them. I have pictures I can send you. It's mm -hmm. a. It's a fire. Uh, fire boat. So it's it's actually oh, okay. fire suppression. Yeah. Yeah. The idea was that it go up the, the, if the condos got on fire, it could go up the river, yeah. Crystal River, and actually fight the fire from okay. there. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. If it's a yeah, rescue no. boat, if it, oh, yeah. it was uh, built for the fire department. Yes. Fire and rescue. It's How many years ago? Uh, 2011. I did that. That part I do know. Okay. okay. It was a build that was converted for fire usage. I don't right. think it was built as a fire yeah. boat. As I understand. Well, that's what they I put said. the equipment on it. Yes. Yeah. And if you look on the Glen Arbor Township website, you can uh, get more information about it. Okay. It really has all the dimensions. If you're a voter, that would mean a lot. It might be a great option. It might not. Well, and with township is discovering kind of the same thing that Peninsula Township discovered several years ago, because they had a vote at one time. Remember, they were interested in selling it to us. Yeah. They just don't use it. They used it twice last year. The supervisor said they used it no more than five times a year ever. It was cost of maintaining it, training, storing, yeah. all that stuff. So they're kind of experiencing kind of the same thing in the township. I, uh, I heard that Elma Township was looking for a, uh, a fire and rescue boat. Uh, so. so we're going to have a dialogue with the township and see how that plays out. But we did not put any of that money in the budget for next year. Uh, the only new personnel request that we received is from the uh, deputy probate registrar position which the judge talked to us a couple months ago. And that is approximately 50, 50,000, is that? Right, correct? they they have in their narrative about 30,000 for wages, so they don't have the fringe included. So, so 50 to 50,000 mm dollars. -hmm. That's the only personnel request, you, right? Yes. Deputy probate Register. Register. You were sending an email with this. Right? Yeah, I'll put this in a memo to you. Full time? Yes. Mm -hmm. As a pastor, I'll put this in a memo to all of you and get it out so you can have dialogue on it. Uh, we did not put anything in the budget for HVAC for this project here because we either, see, it's based on what we're talking about here, if it goes forward, we did threaten, we will transfer somebody over and that. Some of it may be bonded or may not, so there's nothing in the budget here for this project. Uh, Jerry briefly talks about it. it's time to redo the parking lot here. He's estimating $36,000 to resurface the parking lot. Is that in or not in? 
No, not, not of this is in the budget. These are requests. Mm -hmm. We don't put anything, we don't put these requests in the budget until you tell us. What we normally do is you remember, we have dialogue, we bring people in if you wish, and then we make a decision, right. you make a decision whether you want to include it in the budget or not. Uh, something Matt has tried for a couple of years with the 2% grant was not successful. He had AEDs in the deputy vehicles. So that really is, I mean, it's a deputy, it's a sheriff's department, but Matt is requesting that. And that's about $35,700 to equip all the vehicles. Do they have AEDs in those vehicles right now? He I made it sound like no. I think he a few. He made, made it sound like not. a few, but not all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought they all did at one time, but maybe they're getting old and yeah, you and not have like we just find out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Batteries die and they're not. Changed. They're only good for so long. Right. 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 It's a defibrillators. Yeah. yeah. It stands for. Automatic external defibrillators. Yeah. There you go. And they've had them with their own. Oh, you're not recognized from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> state your name. Yeah, state your name and ask for your hand. Mr. Wessel, is, is, is Matt's van that's used for emergencies, uh, has that been? Well, that's, that's, that's coming that's up further. i got a lot more here. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, this is other coming from Matt, but actually it's for the Sheriff's Department also. It's that special lean secure line that we talked about during our... Uh, Challenges with our network last year. We need we need a special lean line for this law enforcement, and that's five thousand seven hundred dollars. Uh, that'll be the year, probably. Yes. Every year yeah, we I would think so. Yeah. 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 Uh, the Motorola Dispatch Council maintenance is twenty-one thousand dollars. The tower top amplifiers, which I think you were talking about, Commissioner Russell. Is between fifteen and thirty thousand. Oh, I'm sorry. Wasn't that uh, Motorola stuff included in their big fat amount we uh, we uh, approved? Which so big fat amount? <laughs> yeah, there's several. Seven hundred fifty thousand dollar tower thing. No. Contractual was left out of all of that. So we do this every year. You. I, I know, but I thought we had that money. You did for two years, but remember, this is beyond that point. Uh, and you said you'd have to either do a millage, a uh, phone surcharge, or coming from general funds. So we're at that point now. So how much was that? Uh, approximately 21000 But there's more equipment here coming up. There. The tower top amplifiers to enhance coverage. It's uh, 15 to 30,000. The upgrade to, uh, is it the Omina or the Shabby Town? Jeff Power? I think it's for Shabby Town. For Shabby Town, right? The upgrade to the 800 megahertz at the. Yeah, I'm just looking at to what you wrote down and then what I have here in, in the narrative. It's 110,000 I have written down. So the, what you have written down. On the $21,000 that um, Chet was talking about, that is actually in. Oh, um, that is That is budget? in. Yes, that's in. And that is under 911 because it is specifically for dispatch council maintenance, which is not the same as your radios. Your radios is only $10,000 a year. And that is in the two seven. That's in the four seventy six, which is your radio. Fund. So this is in the budget. The the twenty the twenty one thousand uh, yeah. is okay. in. It's under contractual. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're okay. And then you mentioned the tower top amplifiers. Those are fifteen thousand to thirty thousand. And this is for. Um, Mine will say it was not in the budget. It is not. Yeah. This, this is part of his wish list. It's for the Central Tower and the Empire Tower site. Yeah. These are, we'll talk about enhancing those towers at some point. Yep. So once again, it's not critical, but if you want to enhance those towers. So the fifteen to 30000 yeah. that's what and that one is. And the Shabby Town Tower the hundred and 110000 right mm -hmm. there. That's a conventional solution to the Shabby Town Tower site, which is our equipment on their tower. And he is in hopes to ask for that December um, in a 2% grant cycle. But there's no guarantee we get that. So what, these are wish lists, too. These are not saying we're all going to do all these, but these are just long term. Okay. And you can think about this, and you can do some of these. You can do 
two years from now and so forth. Also, uh, we need to replace some of the generators at the towers, and that's that's going to be about ten thousand dollars because the power goes out, we have to get back up all the generators. And they're getting quite a little over the there. Is it ten thousand for all of the towers? I believe for, or no, for seven, two. Yeah, two. One two. Or two, two. I believe it's about five thousand. Right, yeah. Jim, about five thousand mm -hmm. each. Yeah, he's got it at uh, the central tower and the Maple City Tower. Um, are extremely old and have failed on multiple um, occasions. One of his worries is that with the ISPs coming in and people are upgrading and we're getting more money for those rentals, are we liable if that tower is down because our generator didn't function? So that's what he was looking at for replacement. I did mention to him that he does have money this year. If there are things that you're looking in the schedule of him that he could actually come to in 19 for. But also, you have the help of fund. Yes. That, that is what this yeah, all is from. That's where we're going to come from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, these are not, not all general budget okay. requests. I'm just mm -hmm. giving you an overview of the request. Mm -hmm. right. And Michelle, I'm going to bring this up because it's always a concern for her and it is for all of us is potential health care cost. We don't know. We just don't plan, but health care costs, you know, we've been very fortunate over a long period of time. And I don't see any crisis scenario. The horizon, but you never know. Michelle herself. Except Michelle. Yes. But we did notice she's not here. We actually accomplished our goal, Jen, right? Mm -hmm. We were still debating today whether she'd actually show up or not. We, we <laughs> really so need to let her. Her. We no, should pass she's... around a card, though. Yeah. We really should let her know how much we missed her. Yeah, so yes, we, we definitely have to let her know. Barely got through without her. So, the first so motion those, are the, yeah. those are the request outside of the normal what's in your budget process. Okay. So we don't know how long you want to sit here today because we thought the HVA meeting would take a lot longer. So we're prepared just to pass the books out. Obviously you have not seen this. Review this. Jan, do you have any oversight you want to provide? Uh, no, the only thing I didn't mention when uh, to Kathy accidentally was when she was putting the books together, your budget narratives are actually on the start and they actually need to go underneath your information, your supplemental information. That's where those okay. budget narratives well, go. Mine. That's where mine is. Mine oh. is under there. Yeah. Well, that is perfect. I just want to know that mine wasn't. Based on our <laughs> past experiences, <laughs> you put as much of the books home and look at them before we have any discussions. Oh, right. So we're thinking we will not bring anyone for our next meeting because that's August 8th. Okay. But at this point, we'll go in more in detail. That gives you a chance to look at it, ask any questions. I'll put all this in a memo form. And then you can decide after that how you want to proceed and which one is you want to bring in and have dialogue about, if you wish to bring them in. I have a question on the asphalt out here. Do we have a regular schedule for that type of maintenance? Yes, it's every three years. Three, years ago. three. okay. But this one has the more crap. Yeah, well, that's why it's actually more. more. Yeah, we go out for bids, obviously. But it's saying because of it's now it's X number of years old. Yeah. In the past, we've just done sealant. This year, it may have to be more than that. That's why the cost is more. What about behind the jail? I he made it. He made it sound like it's sure. the whole package. Oh, yeah, whole campus. I, I, I think did, so, but yeah. we can. I was going to say. Yeah, he did like it eighteen minutes to do parts and equipment. You'll have to move. Yeah, yeah which we've done it. Yes, yeah. yes. There's a whole bunch in there. Yes. Commissioner. I just had a question about how things are going over on the road. Uh, we had a very productive meeting with the. Well, they haven't started yet. They're going to start. I understand that, but no, no budget implications as far as so far? Well, actually, the good thing is uh, the meeting we had, we had two representatives from Lutz Roofing. We had our consultant from Grand Rapids, the gentleman who's the partial owner. We had the rep from the uh, supplier. And actually, I left that meeting quite impressed with them. Mm -hmm. They knew what they're doing. They uh, do daily updates to the supervisor and so forth. And we can tap online, get daily updates or weekly updates mm -hmm. on how they're doing. And obviously it's contingent on weather, but they're very confident they may get done quicker than anticipated. But you know, it's all depending on the weather. weather. No, there was a, actually, a, I was quite impressed with two people that came up from Lutz Roof and obviously they've done major, major projects in the past. You know, all, all the supplies are here. So we'll find out uh, when they start. Just a short day. If things go well, their supervisor will be here at August 13th just to give us an, an update. 
I asked him if he could come because they're going to be here working. So I asked him if he could come at 9 o'clock just to give us some, an update. And they said they would. You could have told him can. Well, uh, no, because he'll be at the beginning of the meeting with, with my update. Okay. Commissioner Wessel, did you have you, you mentioned, uh, Jet, that there were no uh, uh, personnel increases except the one from the from That was the, the only one that we received. Were there any suggestions from any of the departments where they might uh, reduce a position or not fill an open position? No. I don't think we have any open positions. Um, well, the Parks and Rec we talked about. Oh, well, potentially. And that's a Parks and Rec can talk about that part-time position, what do you want to proceed with that? We put it in the budget just because you approved in the past, but we'll wait to hear from you whether you wish to proceed with that or not. You have uh, 450 hours allocated for the summer of health. That's vacant now because of David Warren's departure. With the new IT um, contract, mm -hmm. have we had enough time to know whether we can budget appropriately for that? Uh, I'm not sure enough time, but I've had discussions because I think you're the one who asked me to come up with a long-term plan if Ron wins the lotto. Right. So we're working on that, so we'll have a discussion on that. <laughs> not get hit by a bus. No, right. never so seen it. Yeah, never yeah, seen yeah. So yes, I've had discussion with that. Uh, from Ron tells me the transition now is going extremely well, and he's actually uh, very pleased with the partnership so far. It has freed up Ron to do things that he has an expertise on. You know, the computer is a difference. I find out more and more. You can be a great computer technician, but not be a network person. Ron's strength is in the computer part of it, and so they've done that. And Ron said it has freed him up to do other things now that. He didn't have time to do before, so he seems. I'm still getting this fishing stuff, so. I'm well, sorry. guys, you probably <laughs> will get in there. Oh, you're getting fishing emails? Yeah. For the record, Mr. West Cream. finally passed his test. But I, I get another. Did it every other day, I get another question from Ron. He could reduce his office personnel if it's. Well, those are automatically <laughs> generated, so. It's for people that we suspect of being. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll just leave it at that. No, you can kill it more than mostly. Uh, Most of you have not received that. Maybe there's a reason that's happening. <laughs> because we passed the test. Yeah. Yes, right, well, I'll give you a little secret. Very early. Right. You only open those that you're expecting. Mm -hmm. If you leave, if you don't open it, you're not in trouble. <laughs> exactly. If you're not sure, you make the phone call first and say, "Did you send me an email?" I made the mistake of asking, and yes, he did send it to me. They <laughs> <laughs> might have to, to do it. So. <laughs> No, it seems to be, uh, you know, it is a little early, but it seems to be going well. Okay. I see their contact person here quite a bit in the building. So based on my limited knowledge of technology, it seems like it's been going well. And we are coming up with a long-term plan. When he wins the mega lot. So we have a... So if you take our meeting is the eight to nine o'clock, could we schedule another meeting beyond that at this point? Because I know your schedules get busy. Yeah, and if we don't do it. Um, I have a tentative date for the twelfth. I don't know. We we talked about that, but right, we I'm available on the twelfth. Is that in August or should we? Or are we going to go into September? Because after that, it gets really Yeah, we really talked busy. about the 12th, but everyone wanted to wait to see where we were. And then Michelle had to get the books, obviously. So we could do the 12th. I have the 12th reserved also. I don't have the 12th set aside. Can we meet the 12th? It's a Monday. I thought we were going to meet uh, the 13th. Well, that's executive. We, we talked about also having it afterwards, too. So we just threw those dates out there. If we need to meet the 13th, we can meet after, but I would think on the 12th, usually those first meetings are a yeah, little on the low well side, aren't they? I can't do the 12th. Yeah. Not till evening. I can do the evening the 12th. I can do 5 o'clock. I, I can't yeah. do the evening the 12th. Well, how about that? So far, the agenda items on the 13th, there's nothing controversial on it. We could meet afterwards. Yeah. We're all here. I mean, we're hey, all here. I know you have, because you have a special meeting on the 6th, you have on the 8th. Mm -hmm. I know it's a lot to ask for all of you to keep coming back here. 
And since you're going to be here on the 13th, you just block up the whole day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. All right. And I have a baby due in August. Oh, wait a minute. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. So we have a special meeting on the sixth, and that's going to end any previous sign this year. And then we're going to meet on the eighth, and then we're going to meet the executive committee meeting, and then the budget workshop on the thirteenth. Correct. The budget is on the 8th, it's on the 9th. I'm sorry. On the 8th, it's at 9 o'clock. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. And it's at 3. And 13, we're here at the 9th, too, at 9 o'clock. I didn't know if you wanted to keep the second item or no, not. No, the finance, no, we're not so going to cross, cross that at all. So, do you have any questions at this point for Jen or John? You want to just take some time to look at the books? Thank you for all the work. And by the 8th, you'll have everything I talked about in the memo form. Mm -hmm. Well, everything I talked about. Well, okay. I'm a budget. Just a comedian here. And we all agreed we really struggled without Michelle here? Yeah, but... There, Jen, you can tell her. I'll tell her. Yeah, she can watch the video. It, it probably would have meant more if we wouldn't let the air out of her tires. Well, <laughs> <laughs> she on vacation. Yep. Yeah. But you want to come in. Keep her here. We oh. We're going to barricade the door. Are, are all of our meetings being videos now? Yep. Yeah. Say hello. Sit up straighter. <laughs> yes. And you, you should go take a look. What you voted? I have. Oh, okay. I, I didn't. I didn't vote for it. <laughs> okay. Neither did I. <laughs> Just that I, I, you know, I had a hat on earlier, and I'm in the convertible, so that explains my hair today. No excuse. <laughs> no excuse. No excuses. <laughs> yeah. Just out of that. We voted for it. I know. <laughs> business, Mr. Chair? I do not. Public comment? Um, I would move to public right? comment. Actually, <laughs> <not fully. laughs> oh, okay. you always got to be one. I'll keep it under five minutes. Now, you guys have always asked us to, you know, be creative, try hybrid solutions, so on and so forth. And just with this upcoming project, if we were able to come up with a hybrid solution where we can stretch this out over 36 months, we could pay cash for it. We wouldn't have to finance them. You know, so whether we fix the six units or we're down, we do the base for one year and then complete the project, however it can be done in phases, and we could save ourselves money by not financing it. But to get it in an 18 month period, it is just a little bit too uncomfortable, especially with all the asks that we have coming up. Just my two cents. What's your answer? We asked you to do that, and, and, and I appreciate that. You, know, you did what we asked you to do, and I appreciate that. So don't take any of this other discussion as a criticism of oh, what no, you no, did. Absolutely not. Absolutely okay. not. Oh, no. Ditto. <laughs> Any other commissioner comments? We are adjourned. Thank you, Jan. You're welcome. <laughs>